now I want to sit back and relax and enjoy my evening. When all of a sudden, I hear this agitating, grating voice. All right, Trout Unlimited, let's do a thought experiment. Let's say we did remove the four Lower Snake River dams. Like, poof, they're gone, demolished, breached. How would this affect salmon runs on the Snake River? Specifically, the portion of the Snake River that you featured in your video. No take backs. Judging by the geology and the trees, I'm guessing this is in the Upper Snake River, which would put us just across the Wyoming border near Yellowstone Park. I've got some bad news if you're hoping for androgynous salmon in this part of the country. As long as we can tell, ocean-going salmon have been blocked by Shoshone Falls in modern-day south-central Idaho. Which means that the lower four Snake River dams have absolutely no effect on the migration habits of the fish in the upper river. In fact, the lower Snake River dams are blocking exactly zero miles of habitat in the Snake River Basin. Now this is a complex issue, and it would be wrong to say that the dams have no effect on the salmon population. But it's disingenuous to show a picture of a dam and then a stretch of river hundreds of miles away and say the two are directly linked. This is clearly not the case. Meanwhile, there's a ton of issues on the Snake River that we can take action on. Adding fish passage on the dams that don't currently have it. Improving agricultural runoff. Habitat restoration in the upper rivers. All of these issues are worth talking about. But we're not because we're distracted by unfair comparisons like this one.